Hello ladies and gentlemen, Legend Commentaries here bringing you today a game with Warwick the Blood Hunter and a 5v5 on Summoner's Rift. His passive is Eternal Thirst where each of his attacks will restore some health to him. This really makes him one of the best junglers, if not the best jungler in the game. This coupled with his first ability, Hungering Strike, where you deal magic damage to an enemy and restore health to yourself will make your jungling route super efficient. And the next ability, Hunter's Call, which increases your attack speed and the attack speed of nearby allies can help out in team fights as well as speed up your jungle greatly. Then you have Blood Scent, where any enemy under a certain percentage of health will be revealed and Warwick's movement speed will be increased. And finally you have his ultimate, Infinite Duress, where you attack an enemy, stun them, and deal successive rapid melee attacks. This can be coupled really well with something like Madrid's Blood Razors to do tons of damage to a single enemy or to catch any kind of carry that could be caught out of position in a team fight. As far as my runes, I take Armor Pen Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist Blues, and some Health Quintessences. This just gives me a lot of durability early game. And for my Masteries, as you can see, I went 11, 10, and 9. Something kind of strange that I saw on a guide on mobifier.com, and I actually really like it. I've played a few games with it, and it's worked out very well for me. So take a look at that, uh, go into League of Legends, play around with your own builds, and see what you like. So as you can see here, I started at the small golems up on top of the map, use my smite on them, go straight to the wraiths, making sure to use my abilities in between my auto attacks just to give yourself a little bit faster speed at jungling. Going straight to the wolf camp, and by the time I'm done with this, my smite will be cooled down. Go ahead and grab my blue buff. I started with the cloth armor just because it gives you a little bit more durability, along with my runes, really helps to give you a little bit more sustain in the jungle and make ganks early early on a little bit more accessible to your team. And uh, the health pots, you know, I hadn't really jungled that much before this game and definitely not too much since the jungle rework and it turns out that you really don't need health pots on Warwick at all. I mean, you can see I'm doing red buff here and still full health, so it's kind of ridiculous. I'm going to go up and grab these double golems and then I'm actually going to stop the video from going in fast forward because I kinda wanted to just show you guys the basic route at the beginning because that's really when a um, a player's jungle route is made or broken is in that very first little trip through the jungle uh, so I made sure to get that red buff later on so that I can go up here gonna help out my buddy Dylan kill this Anivia and her egg pick up nice first blood there and that was a successful first gank that's all you really are required to do as a jungler is just make sure that if you know someone is vulnerable on the enemy team you go up and assist your uh, friendly lanes and getting that kill uh, here I see a Nivea actually chasing Dylan through the uh, through the jungle over here ultimate ignite all that kinda of good stuff Dylan has a really nice fake here runs through the wall and I'm coming around I make sure to place a ward in that bush just in case anyone runs back uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ult Nivea I didn't know if she was going to continue after Dylan or not um, and then I go ahead and keep auto attacking to gain some health back, run out to my turret to try and escape, but uh, little did I know that Cho'Gath, oh boy, his feast was up. His feast was up, and uh, I go in, I thought I was going to be able to help with these kills, but he feasts, Feral screams, and it's over. Um, as far as the item build goes when you're in the jungle, really you can go back as soon as you have the money for your Madrid's Razors and that'll give you that bonus damage for uh, minions. I did dragon every time it was up in this game, uh, as long as Ramus wasn't defending it. I mean, I don't think we really lost it once because uh, their team was not completely on top of keeping that under control. So go ahead and get your Madrids, and then go for Source Boots, and then really you just build straight into a Madrid's Blood Razor because you want that extra damage with your ultimate from all those rapid attacks. So there my ultimate comes up, I go ahead and stun Anivia knowing that Dylan has the DPS to go ahead and take her out once she's immobilized, but um, that gives us another very easy kill in mid, uh, Anivia overextending several times there, which is something that you really want to be keying in on as Warwick, is any enemies who might be overextending in lanes often. In this instance is an example of something that you do not want to do. Uh, this Singed was not exactly of the professional caliber. Um, that you'd like in a teammate, especially in a Singed uh, that's tanking for your team. I went down to try and help him out and 
end up staying to try and kill Katarina because I realized if I'd ran, Anivia's wall and everything would slow me down too much. Um, almost get out here, but then Ramus, of course. Uh, what a jerk. God, I hate Ramus. And I thought I was going to get away. And here, I should have ran to my turret. Uh, I was thinking, you know, he's got armor in his ultimate. He might be able to cut me off. But then he had his roll, so I died anyways. But Anyhow, uh, another gank here. Making sure to place that ward in mid once again. Um, and I see Ramus with blood scent. As you can see, it's uh, pretty high rank there because I was able to see him at, at fairly full health. Uh, he runs down and actually turns around when I retreat. Uh, which was the flaw in his in his ways because Dylan gets a really nice ulti in on him and picks up that kill for us. So I was really glad that I had that support from him. Uh, this is really a game where Dylan and myself did a lot towards making the enemy team think twice about uh, engaging us. And there, I don't know what I was doing. I probably should have ran around the side. I made it out okay in the end, but uh, that was a, that was a stupid move. You definitely want to make sure you watch your engagements and what angles you're coming in from on the enemies. And at this point you can also see that I have been constantly buying sight wards. I've got my vamp scepter. I like to pick up one of those early uh, just to have that extra life steal. You don't really necessarily need it for any specific item that I get early, but it is just nice to have that extra percentage on your physical damage. And they're catching Katarina out of position, giving Dylan the easy uh, barrel and ultimate back in case she was able to shun Poe to someone else. Uh, that's another thing that you can use your ultimate for. If you're not using it to initiate ganks, you can use it to initiate on champions who are out of position. And of course you don't use that on like a tank who's out of position, but if you see a carry like Katarina who has that ultimate that just devastates you in team fights, you can definitely use that when she's uh, floating around in mid and gets a little bit overextended past the point where any of the other characters would want to come in and defend her if you attacked. Uh, and you also need to remember that Warwick's ultimate is a stun. So if Katarina was in her ultimate, go ahead, use it and interrupt that for your team uh, as long as it's up. And here, Yorick running into the bushes even though I had my uh, my blood scent on him. Not the smartest decision, but um, there goes Dylan once again. Bam, nice barrel. He had some really good barrels as Gragas this game. Uh, I have not actually played Gragas before ever, and I'm really thinking about it after this game because he looks retarded. Like You see that? That's uh, a little bit ridiculous. And granted, he is fed, but, um, you know, it just comes comes along with everything. Uh, if you're doing well at a champion, you're going to get fed eventually. Uh, and as you can see, also, Dylan has that blue buff. And as a jungler, I've met a lot of people in the online arena who, when I'm playing champions like Vygar, uh, I've been messing around with Zerath to try and get a commentary with him. Y you know, you have some junglers who just won't offer you the buff. And so I've really made it, as myself, a big proponent of caster play. Uh, my goal to make sure and offer up that blue buff to as many people as I can who are going to use it more efficiently than I am. Which is not to say that Warwick doesn't need it. If your team if your team is not heavy on casters or has someone who you know has a, a tier of the goddess and whatnot, this is another nice little play on Blood Scent there. Uh, he was regening pretty quickly, so I decided to go ahead and make the move. And on his way around the corner, I caught him out of there. Um, decided to get hit by the Sinivia Stun on purpose. Uh, that was not an accident. That was That was completely intentional. And here, I believe I die again? I think. I don't know. We'll, we'll watch the footage. I'll, I'll stop explaining what happens, because you can obviously see what's happening. And I'll just explain key moments, but uh, like you can see in my items, uh, keep going back to this as I progress through them. I have my Madra's Blood Razor now. That's doing that percentage of their health, and that is just one of the biggest factors in why Warwick is so good at either initiating as a tanky Warwick, uh, which you can also build. You know, I... I kind of went for more the AP magic pen magic resist kind of Warwick. Uh, towards the end of the game, I started building a Banshee's Veil and a Guardian Angel, which is what I'd probably do again. And here, I didn't think Ramus was going to have Flash, thought I was going to get a pro playoff. Uh, I ulti through that wall to get a Nivea, but Ramus was able to flash through and, and chase me down. So always be wary of your enemy summoner spells and uh, what kind of position you are in to gank. I, I really should have just stayed down with my team and went back, killed, you know, some of those minions on top to get my health back up because it wouldn't have really taken that long. That's my cat. I hope you guys can hear that because he's a freaking monster. He's like 18 pounds. And there, Dylan once again picking up a nice kill, ulting that Ramus back so that Zin Zhao can pick that one up. Um, but like I was saying, you can really go with a tanky Warwick. You can go with a Warmogs into an Atmas. Um, 
that kind of thing. But I would definitely recommend getting a, a Madrid's Blood Razor on any build that you do as one of your core items because early game, your Magid's Razor is going to be one of the main items that you can get in a jungle route. I mean, you start with your cloth armor, that's one of the few items that actually builds into a relatively effective early game item. So definitely I'd say Magid's Blood Razors is a necessity. You don't have to get it, of course. Uh, nothing is set in stone for any character in League of Legends, but I would definitely recommend it. Uh, source Boots, really there's no reason to get anything else. Uh, y you have so much magic going on with just Magid's Blood Razors, even if that's the only ability that you level and then you go completely tank. Uh, all that damage is magic, so if you have an enemy that's building magic resist, uh, those boots are going to help you get through that and more effectively finish off enemies for your team. And then I go for a Wit's End, which uh, is very well compounded with your ultimate, and it also gives you some magic resist. I like it for the durability. Um, I like building on a Warwick just because oftentimes if you get late game to the point where you are you have your Banshee's Veil and your Guardian Angel, you can initiate on enemies and they'll either run or they'll start fighting you. And if they start fighting you, having that magic resist from all those rapid melee attacks is a really, really good asset to have. Here's Zinja a little bit late getting out. I started running a little bit sooner and unfortunately Ramus caught him out of position. Um, I, I think I get away here. I don't, I don't, actually, I don't actually fully remember right now. <laughs> Try to juke, but that didn't work out because he still had some speed left. But those are my favorite. Those bush jukes, man, you can't get... Oh, this is a good play. All right, if you're attacked by a tank like Ramus, who is completely thriving off of your AD damage against him, start attacking the other champion. I just ignored Ramus, and I went ahead and attacked Katarina, and I was able to stay full health while they were both attacking me, and then turn on this Ramus and chase him out. So that's another tactic that you can definitely use as Warwick, is remember, all that valuable lifesteal that you have can be used in team fights. Uh to effectively win against maybe a 2v1 situation and, you know, a tank with a Thornmail. And there I ultied into him while he was in his ball. That's another thing you want to watch out for is um, ulting into any kind of disable or anything like that. It was just kind of a bad move on my part. I wasn't really thinking on that. Uh, but another example of using your lifesteal to your advantage is you can actually tank turrets. If you have some enemy turrets on... Uh, if you have some enemy minions on a turret, you can actually tank the turret shot while attacking those minions and you'll stay full health throughout the entire duration of it, allowing you and one of your teammates with some AD to effectively backdoor a turret. And it's what we did a little bit later on that bottom turret is I just ran out of the jungle, there was a massive wave of enemy creeps on it, and I just kept that sitting there attacking Hungering Strike, and I stayed full health throughout the entire thing and we were able to take it down really quickly. There's another example, they just kind of overextended. Um, it's actually a pretty close game at this point. They've pushed us back quite a bit. Uh, we've pushed them back. Kills fairly even. Uh, I felt like this was a pretty balanced game, especially given the skill level of some of our players and the skill level of some of their players. It was just, overall, it was just a good game uh, to show you guys. It displayed a lot of the tactics that you're going to want to have on Warwick. Uh, they're making sure to ultimate once again when I'm out of position. And also, another thing that I see people do a lot is they forget that they have Smite late game. If you start with it, continue to use it every time it's off cooldown, even when you're not in the jungle. Uh, you want to make sure that you have it, of course, when you're doing Dragon or Baron. Here, just, I'm being an idiot. I didn't run from Ramus while he had his ultimate, and uh, bad things happen. I could have probably done it if, if uh, Cho'Gath did not arrive, but I ended up dying in that situation. But like I was saying, you want to make sure that you save that smite for things like Baron, Dragon, uh, and that sort of engagement. But if you're not seeing that in the foreseeable future, you'll be doing any of those major map monsters. Definitely use it on you know enemy minions. Get that bonus 10 gold from the mastery, which I would recommend picking up. Uh, I know that I went a very unique mastery build. Maybe not something that you see every single day, but I think it's something that's actually really effective. And something that you can use on a lot of junglers. Uh, the bonus turret damage is something I'm playing around with. I'm not sure if it's completely worth it taking a point out of something else to put it there. But ultimately it's your decision on how you want to play. Let's see if I can pick this one up with a uh, hungering strike. Nice. And there <laughs> I actually had just dove bot to kill Katarina on a turret. It was just kind of retarded so I didn't really feel like it was a necessary part to show. Especially since this commentary has ran so so long. Uh, but this is kind of the death throes of their team. Uh, they haven't pushed any more turrets since I was last talking about, you know, the teams being uh, pretty balanced in this game. So 
we have effectively pushed them back and I mean everyone on our team is doing well at this point I think that we've all got uh, pretty late game items as you can see I built a Stark's Fervor something else that you can do with that Vamp Scepter that's important um, if you have an AD on your team uh, in my case I had Lee Sin and Xin Zhao which both depend on that AD factor so definitely a good decision uh, in this game but in a situation where you had some more AP champions you know a support a tank two APs and yourself I mean, you don't want to be in that situation using a Starks Forever because no one's really going to benefit from it. And here are the last hits of the game. And that's a victory. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I tried to provide a lot of insight. My last one was on Twisted Tree Line. I think it was like my second video. So definitely overdue for a remake. Make sure you go and check out these two. Uh, I made a Jax commentary. I know he's going through a rework and he's going to be completely different, but it's one of those things where I really like to archive kind of what happens in League of Legends. Uh, a lot of people still go back to my old Gangplank video and they're watching that all the time just with the old skills and whatnot. Uh, and then make sure you go and check out that Switor Basics. The beta opens on the 13th, so make sure that if you have your pre-order, you go and download the client. I will be playing, I'll probably be releasing my server and whatnot, we'll make a guild for legend commentaries or something silly willy like that, but make sure you check out those two videos, and other than that guys, I will talk to you later, have a wonderful day, and love you, bye.